This is Dean Blandino, Vice President of Officiating for the National Football League, and this will be the media video for September 26, 2013. A couple of topics to cover. First, player safety crown of the helmet rule. This is from the Indianapolis-San Francisco game, and this was flagged on the field, and it's going to be this player, number 31, for San Francisco. Three requirements. Line up the opponent, lower the head, deliver a forcible blow with the crown of the helmet. If you don't have all three, we don't have a flag. First part, he lines up the opponent. He does take a direct line to the opponent. The first requirement is met. Second part, lower the head. You can see he lowers the head. I'll show you a, a close-up replay next. He does lower the head. Two requirements met. Last part, does he deliver a forcible blow with the crown of the helmet? That's the last part we have to meet in order to have a flag. And Now we're going to look at this shot, and you can see the contact is actually with the shoulder versus the helmet. So that is a legal hit. We do not have the third requirement met. It's a legal hit. A flag should not have been thrown in this situation. Happens quickly. Headlines been thought he saw helmet contact. We'd like to get more input if we have another official who has the ability to see this. In this instance, it's really the headlines been the only one that's going to get a look. So we didn't have an opportunity to take him off the flag, but in our review, we determined it was not a foul. Um, for a crown of the helmet. Let's talk about the back. Maybe is the back in violation? We're outside the tackle box. He catches the pass. He turns. He doesn't have options. He doesn't have the ability to line up and deliver a blow. He's just trying to protect himself. He does lower his head, but it's more to absorb the blow, protect himself. You can see him start to come up with the left arm to protect himself. Not a foul on either player for a crown of the helmet rule violation. Here's the difference. Sunday night, Chicago-Pittsburgh. Watch the running back angle back towards the defender. He has options. He's in space. He angles back towards the defender. He's going to lower the head and deliver a forcible blow with the crown. Look at him turn back toward the defender. And I'll show you a real good shot that shows the contact with the crown of the helmet. Remember, it doesn't have to be to the head or neck area of the opponent. It could be any part of the body. And here we're going to deliver the blow to the right shoulder. And you can see, look at the impact and the compression on the body of the, of the back. And again, I've said all along that the rule, this rule is really designed to protect the player who's delivering the blow, um, more so in a lot of cases than the player who's receiving it. So here, this is a violation, not flagged on the field, shown to our game officials this week that if we see this action, we want to flag down going forward. And then it was reviewed for potential discipline during the week. Play from Minnesota, Cleveland game. Ruling on the field is a muffed punt recovered by the kicking team. And so a muff is an unsuccessful attempt to gain possession of the football. So the key is the receiving team has not gained possession of the football. So it's a loose ball. It was a kick. It remained a kick. Kickers cannot advance when they recover a punt. The kicking team cannot advance it. So it's dead at this point. Watch the back judge come in. We ruled Muff, recovered by the kicking team. He's going to kill the clock, go to the 26-yard line where they recovered and signal first down. Well handled. Show you a replay. When we talk about possession versus a Muff, we get a first touch there. Now, attempting to gain possession of it, just like a catch. Think catch, control two feet, have the ball long enough to perform an act common to the game. The player does not have possession because he does not have two feet down, did not meet all the requirements of a catch, so this is a muff. It's still a kick. It cannot be advanced by the kicking team. This play can only be, any reviewable aspect, a replay review of this play can only be initiated by the replay official in the replay booth. Minnesota threw the challenge flag. They felt that it, it was a fumble and they should have been allowed the advance. Two things. That's not reviewable. Possession of a loose ball in the field of play is not reviewable. That's something the competition committee will continue to look at. The reason it's not reviewable is if we make it reviewable, then we have to open up fumble recoveries in the middle of the field. And a lot of times those go into a pile and it's very difficult in that scrum to review that. So right now it's not reviewable. It will continue to be looked at. Maybe in the off season we'll have the discussion. And if the competition committee feels they need to recommend a change, they will do so. For right now, it is not reviewable. Minnesota can't challenge this play because the replay official is the only one that can review this play. They throw the flag. Think of the Detroit play from Thanksgiving. This is the same situation. We changed the rule this year. The penalty is a charge team timeout. 
Minnesota had three timeouts left. Coach, you can't challenge this. It's going to cost you a timeout. There's no 15-yard penalty in this instance. We incorrectly enforced a 15-yard penalty against Minnesota. The only time we would enforce a 15-yard penalty is if the team that threw the challenge flag was out of timeouts. So the penalty is a charge timeout. That's what we should have done. We made a mistake. We've got to do a better job in this area. That's my job. That's my challenge. It's on me. Key is they can't challenge. It's a replay official review. It's a charge team timeout. If they don't have a timeout, it's a 15-yard penalty. Fourth down fumble rule. Green Bay, Cincinnati, fourth and inches. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. You just want to talk about the difference between a fourth down fumble and a two-minute fumble. The two-minute fumble, fourth down fumble rule, think back the holy roller, Oakland and San Diego, that was the intent of the rule, to prevent a play like that where, where you have a fumble that could be advanced by the non-fumbling player that could end up in a, in a score in a, critical in a critical situation. So here, Green Bay fumbles. Only the fumbling player can advance, recover and advance the football for Green Bay. Okay, 23 fumbles. He's the only one that can advance a fumble for Green Bay. Once Cincinnati recovers, we've had a change of possession. The fourth down fumble rule goes away. 20 recovers it. He fumbles. It's recovered by 23. 23 can advance it. Fourth down fumble rule goes away. It doesn't apply to the defense after a change of possession. Now let's take this play inside of two minutes of the second quarter or the fourth quarter. Two-minute fumble. Two-minute fumble applies to both teams throughout the down. So if this play occurred at not 401, but let's say it occurred at 101 of the fourth quarter. We have a fumble recovered by the defense. 20 recovers and fumbles. It's dead when 23 recovers it and we go back to the spot of the fumble because the two-minute fumble rule applies to both teams throughout the down. So just want to talk about the difference. Here it's a legal advance by Cincinnati because it was fourth down, not inside of two. Inside of two, it'd be dead once this player recovered, and we're going back to the spot of the fumble. Cincinnati's football, first and ten. Okay, last topic, player giving himself up. This was the RG3 play where he goes head first. Okay, he goes head first. So you have an advantage and you have a disadvantage. The advantage is when you go head first, you get everything. You get the full slide until you're touched. The disadvantage is, is you're not down. So if you lose the football when you hit the ground, that's a fumble. The old adage, the ground can't cause a fumble, that's not true in 100% of the cases. If you're not down by contact, the ground can cause a fumble. I'll show you a replay here. As Soon as the runner hits the ground, he loses the football. That's a fumble. He has not given himself up because he went head first and he was not down by contact. So this is a live football, correctly ruled on the field. Detroit recovered the fumble. So let's talk about when a player does give himself up. If the player goes head first, he can give himself up. Any runner can give himself up, not just the quarterback. Any runner can give himself up. Here, the player goes to the ground. He does not make an immediate attempt to advance the football. That's the rule. If you go to the ground on your own and do not make an immediate attempt to get up and advance the football, you have given yourself up, and the instruction to the officials is to kill the play. Here, Cruz gives himself up. He drops the football. He is not making an immediate attempt to advance. By rule, he has given himself up, and we will come in and kill it. There's no fumble. That is, is giving himself up. And that's how you give yourself up. You either stay on the ground, or in this case, it's a little bit risky to give up the football like that, but he has given himself up in that instance. The more frequent one you see, and the one that we encourage players to do, here we see Russell Wilson, former baseball player with the good slide. He has given himself up, so the advantage is you cannot be unnecessarily contacted, and you can see the defenders do a great job here of laying off. The disadvantage is, is that as soon as a body part, other than the hand or the feet, touch the ground, you are down. This is the spot. You don't get the full slide like if you go head first, but when you go head first, you can get contacted and you can potentially have a fumble. So here, it's over. He's down at this point. That's the spot. These guys can't unnecessarily contact the player. So everybody does a good job there. That's a player giving himself up. That's the media video. Thanks for your attention and look forward to talking to you in the future.